Okay, the close sign has been removed. The rope across has been removed, and so now we're going to descend into the Osirion. So what you're going to see from this view is only a little part of what it is. Through this tunnel we go up a little bit and then there's a little room on the left and a very long hallway on the right. Again, the vertical stones here are granite from the Aswan Quarry, and then the perimeter is a very, very, very hard sandstone, possibly a quartzite, according to our geologist Susan. You can see there used to be a roof, but the roof was destroyed by quarrying for building material, likely during the dynastic time frame. This is my fourth time here, but I've only been the longest I've ever been in here before was about 20 minutes. Now we have two full hours. Have any of you heard of the flower of life that's supposed to be here? Right there. There are many of them. So there's the famous flower of life which some people have said is laser etched. In fact, it's painted on. You can see that it is red ochre paint. It is not etched into the stone itself. This is granite, right? Yeah. What about the weight of these babies? About 60 tons, according to Chris Dunn. So here you have a ship portrayed out of the same Red ochre paint. Looks like part of the roof came down. And all of these curious chambers.
So little recessed areas. You can in fact see tool marks. But how ancient are these tool marks? Hmm. So I'm going to take my time and explore the site because we have a fair bit of time here and do some somewhat long segments rather than a number of really short ones. So another recessed area. It appears, the structure appears to be bilaterally symmetrical. This one is almost intact. See the red pinky color. So again, it could very well be quartzite. And there's an underground spring here, so that's why the water is here. They do pump it out, then it fills itself back up again. Very polished surfaces, especially on that creamy white one. Almost perfectly flat. So again, bilaterally symmetrical. What's left of some of the roof and ceiling. Most of it's gone. That's your opinion? I saw, uh, it reminded me of Cusco, the walls in Cusco, where uh, they had the snake, that one alley that has the, you know, the, the vendors tell you the snake is there. And that's just what popped into my mind. And then there's little filler blocks that are that big. Yeah. Dug in there, but everything fits perfectly. And some knobs too on knobs, some of the surfaces. Yeah, a couple of little knobs. Yeah. The main difference is that this is very linear, whereas yeah. in Cusco it's polygonal. So it could be the same culture, could be different, but equally as talented. Now this is unbelievable. Rare treat. So this gives you a sense of the scale how big these vertical blocks are. Some have estimated a weight of in the neighborhood of 60 tons. So to calculate the weight in the imperial system, you go height, length, and breadth in feet. So you get a cubic foot measurement and then you multiply that by 175 pounds per cubic foot, and that gives you the weight. And then so you see some dynastic inscriptions higher up. Okay. Here's our friend Carlos, who has his own YouTube channel and Facebook page. And we're going to go inside here. Hopefully it's not too dark. 
So there's actually lighting in here, which is good. So we're going to walk all the way to the other end. And all sorts of encrusted material on the walls, likely salts from not clean water. So it appears from all the salt content on the walls that this um, could have actually filled up with water at different points in time. Again, we see some dynastic depictions, so clearly utilized during dynastic times, but this would have been found by the dynastic people from the time before, from what they call Zep Tepe the first time. And then walk to the other end just to give you again a sense of scale. Looks like it may have been actually a sealed room. Looks either this is the opening here, which is relatively narrow, or it could have the opening here could have been quarried, so it could have actually been a sealed chamber at one point, or one level up, sealed, level two open. Okay, now we're on the other side. Very smooth surfaces on the ceiling blocks, which are still here. Other surfaces kind of rough, could be the result of um, just erosion over time from water, water level rising and falling. And a small interlocking block you can see there, similar to what we see in Cusco. And even some protrusions we're going to see, or what people call nubs or knobs. Here. Also, you see the holes here. So clearly, at one time there were doors on here, what they were made of. But those would be the pinpoints. And we see tool marks on this stone, but not on the yellow one. Whether the yellow is a recent repair, 
don't know. So again, holes where the hinges would be. Again, it's strange. It seems in each room you have this, you have this, let's say that the quartzite or the sandstone, and then the next one always seems to be this yellowish, incredibly fine grained material. And then the next one beyond that. That should be. Mm, okay, it's kind of dead energetically. It's not really creating a great acoustic effect, but we're going to have to ask Susan, the geologist, why it's the pinky red material at the opening, and then the ceiling inside here is much lighter, finer grain material. Okay, now we're going to proceed. After these lovely young ladies walk walk past, and we're going to inspect this part, which is again only open if you have spent the money for the special permission. What's important to see here in this lintel above, you see a massive horizontal saw mark, which is original. That is the largest saw mark that I have ever seen in Egypt. Have a look at the underside of the ceiling. Looks like there was a chunk that used to fit in there. It fell out at some point in time. Not a perfect fit, but actually we're seeing more and more of examples of where they had to add little bits of stone in. So there may have been a flaw in the original. Well, if you guys didn't see this, that's probably the biggest horizontal saw mark. Let's go into the next section. This, of course, is all dynastic period hieroglyphics added. Maybe this is all dynastic. Seems to be quite a fine grained sandstone. So this section may have actually been added during dynastic times to the pre dynastic center structure. And now down the long hallway. Some beautiful depictions of boats and other people pulling the boats or slaves. I don't read hieroglyphics, so I don't know, but I'm just filming a little bit of it so that you can see.
these people are kneeling, so it could very well be that they're being depicted as slaves. Not that I know for sure. But boats, quite possibly meaning that they were brought from a very foreign land. So we're just going to slowly walk to the end, because when I was here last time, we didn't have time. We only had about 20 minutes inside, and so we were forced by the guards to leave before we had completed all the stuff we wanted to look at. You even had so you found out that the 32 habits after they came home. Most of them you. Who knows? Far away from me, it's fine. To drink more whiskey. Well, if that letter is not that much, then we Really? The, it will open for you the, the key! Yes. This is Mo. Mo with Select to Egypt. Select to Egypt, Egypt to travel. Select to Egypt. If you're coming to Egypt, contact Select Egypt and they will do the most profound job of taking care of you and showing you whatever your heart What's desires. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Mo. So you want to come? He's opening the door. Yep. What is that? Right. No one's ever been through here. I don't know. That's the whole thing. When you find the person with the key and they open the door, you go through the door. Everything is complete chance. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can't. You can't say, you know, can I do this on this day? You have to show up and see who's there. So, sometimes they'll let you do something. Sometimes they won't. Oh, wow, it's the staircase. It's always exciting when you get to do something like this. Pure chance. Yeah. Let's go, Carlos. Let's do it. Thank you. So this I have never been allowed to do. The gentleman with the keys arrived and opened this back gate, and now we are ascending back out of the of the Osirion and see where the staircase goes. So let's go back down. We've been to the surface. Now we're going to go back through the tunnel once again. Again, first time I've ever heard the gate being opened. And we have to thank our good friend Motaha of Select Egypt Travel Company in located in Egypt. I find it. I find it. 
Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Another thing to point out is this actually material here is mud brick. So that likely would have been in very late dynastic times. So this is the youngest portion of the tunnel. Okay, if you guys are very quick, if you go you through, the, you can go through the gate and up the stairs. He's going to close it very soon. You have seen the depictions of Jesus with red ochre, right in between the Egyptian air drifts. Really? Yeah. And it transitions into the sandstone with, with the stucco coating. They just try to just get him. And here you see the circles. Remember that we saw them there uh -huh. at the temple as well? Boom. They were just starting it. Here's Jesus. And here's this, this typical Christianity drawings. They overtop using the same red ochre as this. Wow. Could very well be a depiction of Jesus. Exactly. So this is the Christian And remember, era. it was at the same time period. If right. You think about it. Right. Cool. <laughs> I love it. Great. <laughs> so again, this area here is sandstone, most likely. Could be limestone, but there is a stucco protective coating that was put on top of it. And some more hieroglyphics. Again, I don't know how to read glyphs, so you would have to find somebody who could do that. I just wanted to show you that there are hieroglyphics inside here. So this obviously was done during dynastic. I believe this part of the tunnel is dynastic. Back there with the mud brick, either late dynastic or early Greco-Roman or Greco-Roman time period. And the corbel ceiling with lots of repair work being done. So some of this is very modern with lights and skylights. And again, depictions of boats, maybe boats that were on the Nile or possibly boats that came from a much greater distance. And here, depictions of a boat being raised up by somebody. So, ship of the heavens. And now we're walking back into the main part of the Osirion. Again, the lintel with the very large horizontal cut 
very long saw, at least 12 feet, 15 feet, so four to five meters long. And back across and into the main part of the room. Thank you.